Good day everyone. My name is Mr. Chisum and today we'll be looking at the brachial plexus. When we talk about plexus, we are talking about network of nerve fibers, collection of nerve fibers. So when we talk about the brachial plexus, we are talking about a network of fibers that innervates the stem and muscles of the upper limb. I repeat, the brachial plexus are a network of nerve fibers that innervates the stem and muscles of the upper limb. The brachial plexus begins from the root of the neck and it crosses the axilla to supply the stem and the muscles of the upper limb. The brachial plexus is formed by the anterior division of uh, the cervical spinal nerve and the cervical spinal nerve C5, C6, C7, C8 and the first thoracic nerve. The spinal nerve are divided into the anterior and the posterior division. So the brachial plexus is formed by the anterior division of the cervical spinal nerve, cervical C5, C6, C7, C8 and the first thoracic spinal nerve. So the brachial plexus is divided into five. We have the roots, we have the trunk, we have the divisions, we have the cords, and we have the branches. So we'll be looking at these different divisions of the brachial plexus, one after the other. Let's begin with the roots. The root of the brachial plexus is formed by the anterior division of the cervical spinal nerve C5, C6, C7, C8, and the first thoracic nerve. And these roots are formed at the root of the neck. So from the root of the neck, it crosses in between the anterior and the middle scalene muscle, where it goes to the base of the neck. At the base of the neck, the brachial plexus, the roots, joins together to form the trunk. At the base of the neck, it joins together to form the trunk. So what happens here is that C5 and C6, as you can see here, merge together to form the superior trunk. C7 on its own forms the middle trunk. C8 and T1 merge together to form the inferior trunk. So the, at the base of the neck, the root of the cervical spinal nerve and the first thoracic nerve, they merge together. The root of C5 and C6 merge together to form the superior trunk. And this is happening at the base of the neck. The C7 forms the middle trunk. The C8 and T1 merge together to form the inferior trunk. So these three trunk, superior, middle, and inferior trunk are the Three trunk of the brachial plexus. As this three trunk proceed, they cross, they move laterally and cross the posterior triangle of the neck, where each of the trunk divides into two. Each of the trunk divides into anterior and posterior division. So you can see here that the superior trunk divides into the anterior and the posterior division. The middle trunk divides into the anterior and posterior division. The inferior trunk divides into anterior and posterior division. And this is happening immediately it crosses the posterior triangle of the neck. So at the axilla, these six divisions begin to merge together again to form the cords. So the six divisions of the brachial plexus begin to merge together again to form the cords. So, you can see here now, the anterior division of the superior and the anterior division of the middle trunk forms the lateral cord. So, the anterior division of the superior and the anterior division of the middle cord join together to form the lateral cord. Then, the anterior division of the inferior uh, trunk remains the medial cord, while the three posterior division join together to form the posterior cord. 
So this is the posterior division joining the posterior division of the middle, the posterior division of the inferior trunk, joining the posterior division of the middle trunk, and the posterior division of the superior trunk to form the posterior cord. I repeat, at the axilla, the anterior division of the superior trunk joins with the anterior division of the middle trunk to form the lateral cord. The anterior division of the inferior trunk remains the medial cord, while the, the posterior division of the superior, the posterior division of the middle, and the posterior division of the inferior trunk join together to form the posterior cord. So let's move to the branches. This cord, immediately it leaves the alveola. This cord begins to divide into branches and it divides into about five major branches, which are the musculocutaneous, the axillary, the medial, the radial, and the ulnar nerves. So we will be taking these five branches or five major branches one after the other. The first one is the musculocutaneous nerve. The musculocutaneous nerve is formed by the group of C5, C6, C7, the cervical spinal nerve. And it innervates the brachialis muscle, the bicep brachii, and the coraco brachialis muscle. So the second nerve here is the axillary nerve. The axillary nerve is formed by the root of C5 and C6. The axillary nerve is formed by the root of C5 and C6. And it innervates the deltoid muscle and the teres minor muscle. Then we have the third nerve, which is the medial nerve. The medial nerve is formed by the root of C6 to T1, the cervical and uh, spinal nerve, and the first thoracic spinal nerve. And the medial nerve innervates the flexor compartment of the uh, forearm. That is where it innervates. Then we have the fourth nerve here, which is the radial nerve. The radial nerve is formed by the root of C5 to T1 and it innervates the, it innervates the tricep brachii muscle. That is where the radial nerve innervates, the tricep brachii muscle. Then we have the final one, the ulnar nerve. The ulnar nerve is formed by the root of C8 and T1 and it innervates the, it innervates the intrinsic muscles in the hand. That is where it innervates. Then let's go back to the clinicals. The first clinical that we have here is how to locate the brachial plexus in a cadaver. To locate the brachial plexus in a cadaver on a normal is a difficult job to do. But there is a landmark that we are looking at, and that landmark is an M structure. An M structure is what we are looking at. If you can find the end structure that is formed by the musculocutaneous, the medium, and the ulnar nerve, you can use it as the base to locate the brachial plexus in the cadaver, and you can trace back. So you can use it as the base and trace back so that you can see the cord, the division, the trunks, and the roots. So whenever you uh, dissect a cadaver, what you should be looking at is an M structure. You can see this M structure that is formed by the musculocutaneous, the median, and the ulnar nerve. And you can locate it at the axilla. Then you can from there trace back. Then we have the second clinicals, which is known as the X palsy. The X palsy is it is the injury that are formed by the upper roots, which is C5 and C6. So it is the damage to the nerve of the upper root, C5 and C6. And this is a result of difficult vaginal delivery. When a child is being born and mistakenly the tray that is forcibly pulled, it can cause the damage to the C5 and C6 spinal roots. And the nerves that are affected here is always the 
the musculoscutaneous and the axillary nerve is affected, and also the muscles that are affected is the coracobrachialis, the brachialis, the bicep brachii, and the deltoid muscle are affected. So here, any child with egg palsy, you see that they, the person will not be able to be able to attack with the shoulder, or attack with the arm. Then the person will not be able to stimulate the forearm. The person will not be able to stimulate the forearm. The person will not be able to flex the arm at the shoulder level. So we have the final clinical period here. Yeah? We have the Crumpers palsy. The Crumpers palsy is a damage to the left group of C8 to T1. And this is also a result of difficult vaginal delivery. So, when a child is being born and um, the process of delivery becomes difficult or the hand of the child um, may be first come out before the head, while trying to uh, salvage the situation, the nerve group of C8 to T1 can be damaged if the upper limb is forcefully pulled. So, that is it. And the nerves that are affected here is the median nerve and the ulnar nerve are affected and also the muscles that are affected are the intrinsic muscles of the hand. So before I conclude, let me do a recap of what you said so far. I said that the brachial plexus is defined as a network or connection of nerve fibers that supplies the skin and muscles of the upper limb. So and it is formed by the anterior division of the Spinal nerves C5 to T1, about five of them forms the brachial plexus. So, and this happens at the root of the neck. So, as it leaves the root of the neck and comes to the base of the neck, they, they merge together to form three trunk, which is the superior, middle, and inferior trunk. Then, as it leaves the base of the neck and crosses the, the posterior triangle of the neck, each, each and every one of this trunk divides into two, which is the anterior and posterior division each. Then at the axilla, the divisions begin to merge together again to form three trunk, which is the lateral, posterior, and medial trunk. The anterior division of the superior trunk and the anterior divisions of the middle trunk merge together to form the lateral trunk uh, cord. The anterior division of the inferior trunk forms the medial Called, and the three posterior divisions of the three trunk forms the posterior cord. And at the axilla, these cords divide into the musculocutaneous, the axillary, the median, the radial, and the ulnar nerve. I have come to the end of these teachings. And before I end, I would like you to please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Learn the teaching grades. Please try as much as possible to share this video. Comment on this video, like and share to your friends. Thank you very much.